everyone, and welcome to Canada's Educational Consultancy Services, uh, Education Consultancy Services free webinar about study in Canada. So I am Francis De Villa, an educator, and tonight uh, two of our partner schools in Canada. One is from the largest city of Toronto, of Ontario, which is uh, Toronto, and the second is the capital city of province of Alberta, which is Edmonton. So both schools offers unique programs and also graduates from the schools will be eligible for postgraduate work for me. So uh, the school representative tonight will discuss the process, requirements, and the opportunities when you study in the school. So I'm also here tonight with my colleague, Miss Vanity, an education counselor also, who will discuss the assistance, who, uh, who will discuss the assistance of Kanata Education to the applicants. Okay. And we now start this webinar. Uh, our first speaker is Renzo, uh, the Philippine Marketing Representative of Centennial College. So Centennial College is a school in Toronto, Ontario that has post certificates and diploma courses. So without further ado, let us all welcome Sir Renzo from Centennial College. Hi, Renzo. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this webinar. Uh, stable by internet call. Um, hello. And so, can everyone hear me? Clear? Yes, we can hear you, Renzo. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, again, my name is Renzo Sespon, and I'm the Philippine Marketing Assistant of Centennial College. And before I start my presentation, I just want to show you a video from our fellow Filipino international students who are uh, studying in, at Centennial College. Then let me just share the video. registered practical nurse in, here in Canada, but I also work uh, part-time as a PSW, personal support worker. Centennial College has helped me in many ways. It has helped me um, improve my communication and my people skills as well. The staff and professors are really approachable. You can really feel the, sin the sincerity in helping the students and making each student succeed in life. I met a, a lot of people online, they're asking questions about how to get to Canada as a student. I am really happy that we have an office in Manila to cater those who are interested in coming here as a student. Canadians in general are very nice, friendly, and happy people. And also, people here just love to celebrate. And I think that's one way that Filipino people can relate to very much, because here, celebrations are everywhere. I graduated from Community and Child Studies Foundations with honors, I'm proud to say. And now I am on my um, third semester of um, Early Childhood Education Program. Canada is a country that embraces diversity. Everybody's culture and tradition is being celebrated. I'm currently working as a junior accountant in a tax accounting firm. I really recommend Centennial College as an institution here in Canada especially in Toronto. They have a lot of facilities that can help you develop your skills, abilities, not just focus and study. Actually, I had a hard time choosing for my program. They offered a lot of good programs that will make you experience way beyond your profession or way beyond your skills. I've always wanted to study abroad. It has been my dream to come to Canada. I came to study at Centennial College because my sister came here and she got the job that she wanted with the help of Centennial College. While I was a student, I volunteered at the business school where I got to develop my skills and confidence and developed a good relationship with my teachers. I also got to work with the field placement officer at the business school. We were able to create the field placement app for the students and employers to use throughout their field placement journey. I have gained so much confidence with myself and I got a job from my placement, which is a part of my program here at Centennial College. 
For those aspiring students, welcome to Canada and welcome to Centennial College. I'm looking forward to seeing more Filipinos to come here, to get to live here, to study here, and make it their own home away from home. Mga kababayan namin Filipino, we are encouraging you to come and visit Centennial College Makati office. Sorry. Okay, so that is just a glimpse of what it's like to study at Centennial College as a Filipino international student. And as you may have noticed in the video, our students don't just uh, stay in their classroom studying, but also uh, we have facilities that can definitely help you uh, work ready with more practical experience and uh, a professional environment closely and uh, close and very similar to what you may experience uh, at your professional work. So let me just share you my uh, presentation. Okay, so can everyone see my uh, present my screen, my presentation? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so moving forward, uh, Centennial College is located in Ontario, home of the largest Filipino community in Canada and the most populous province in Canada as well. And we are specifically located in Toronto, uh, the financial capital of Canada. And just like any other financial capitals, there are several work opportunities for careers and work. In fact, the greater Toronto area has almost 50% of the Ontario population living there. So this just goes to show how big the opportunity is in terms of work in Toronto. And if you even look up indexes and rankings online, you would definitely always see Toronto making on the list as one of the best places to live or one of the most livable cities. Uh, Toronto is number one fastest growing tech hub in North America. And because of this, the city created more jobs than the San Francisco Bay Area, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. combined in 2019. So why Toronto? Around 50% of the population in Toronto are not born in Canada, meaning you will meet different people from different countries during your stay. And studying at Centennial College will definitely be a culturally diverse experience for you since students from over 150 countries are currently enrolled since 2010. And if you're feeling homesick, uh, there's no need to worry since we also have a huge Filipino community in the city as well. So you can definitely hang out with your fellow Kababayans. And just like what one of our students said earlier in the video, you can make Centennial College your home away from your home. Moving forward, uh, these are our campuses. Uh, we are located across Greater Toronto area and our main campus is the Progress Campus. Uh, each campus is houses specific schools and have facilities and equipments for their hands-on experience as well. So first, our Progress Campus is home to the business school, hospitality, tourism, culinary arts, and selected engineering and applied sciences. And like you have seen in the video, we have facilities that help our students engage and have a hands-on experience that prepares them after they graduate. And we also have our own cafe and restaurant. Uh, we call, uh, it is called The Local, and it is operated by the students together with professional chefs, managers, and faculty. And we also have a 20,000 square foot event center facilitated by our staff, faculty, and again, students. This clearly shows that we also want our students to have an environment similar to professional workplace during their study. So moving forward again, we, all we also have an accommodation for our students, but of course you're also free to look for accommodations outside Centennial College. Uh, Centennial Place gives you the convenience you want living on campus with the Centennial College lifestyle you are looking for. And you can enjoy state-of-the-art accommodations with a 24-hour fitness center, a spacious study and purpose-built lounges, fully furnished rooms, and an active social calendar all in a perfect location. And it costs at least 1,000 Canadian dollars per month. And again, students can choose to stay wherever they want. And we can also help you look for accommodations outside our campus. And off-campus housing usually costs around 400 up to 600 Canadian dollars per month. And I believe it can also go as low as 350 Canadian dollars per month as well. I'm sorry for that. So going back to our campuses, 
Now the Story Arts, the Story Arts Center campus is home to the School of Communications, Media Arts and Design. So if you're a creative person and you want to express it, whether it's through films, effects, photos and the likes, we highly recommend you to check our programs under the school. And for facilities, we have 16,500 square foot television studio, a video, audio, and post-production facilities, photography studio, and digital imaging labs, library and digital resource center, a state-of-the-art newsroom with live broadcast capabilities, a fitness center, and finally, our corridor gallery for student, a graduate, faculty, and community art exhibitions. So you can definitely express your inner creativity and the facilities can definitely push you closer to your masterpiece. Next is our Ashtonby campus, which is home to the School of Transportation and the Select School of Advancement programs. Our School of Transportation is the largest on-site transportation training facility in Canada. And our faculty are among, are among the most highly skilled in the industry and the training equipment is state of the practice. And our automotive lab labs host the latest in technology for cars, trucks, and heavy duty vehicles. And we have a fully equipped hangar for our aerospace and avionics students as well. Next is our new campus, uh, the Downsview campus, which facilitates the relocation of our long running aviation technician programs, as well as uh, the related aircraft and equipment from the Ashton B campus hangar in Scarborough. So some of the programs uh, which used to be located, which used to be in, uh, which used to be at Ashtonby campus, some of them are already relocated and moved to this new campus as well. And the new campus provides additional instruction space for the existing programs, as well as new programs in aerospace manufacturing uh, delivered by our School of Engineering, Technology and Applied Sciences. Next is our Morningside campus which is home to the School of Community and Health Studies, as well as Selected Engineering Technology and Applied Science programs. A Centennial College is committed to delivering innovative community and health teaching with practical laboratories and clinics where you receive hands-on experience. Our programs such as personal support worker, a pharmacy technician, and massage therapy are just some of the popular programs taken from the school. Centennial College is the first and one of the largest publicly funded college in Ontario, which give us the uh, which give us the experience and funds to provide two partnerships for our students. Hundred that ensures our programs are forward thinking as the economy evolves and employers' demands continue to change. They also help shape our curriculum and learning outcomes, meaning our curriculums will definitely make you work ready. And you'll also have opportunities to work with the best and the brightest of Canada's corporate players, and maybe even landing a placement with companies like Google, Bombardier Aerospace, Samsung, and Ford. So we have seven schools similar to what we call a department or college in our universities. First, we have the School of Advancement, the Business School, School of Communication, Media, Arts, and Design, School of Community and Health Studies, School of Engineering, Technology, and Applied Science, School of Hospitality, Tourism, and Culinary Arts, and finally, our School of Transportation. And here are the list for our most enrolled programs by international students last winter 2019. Uh, currently, our hospitality programs, including our culinary management, are one of the most popular programs for international students. And for this year, uh, our early childhood education program as well is one of the most popular program. In fact, it is one of the first program to be closed, even if even if it has two uh, campuses, which is uh, Ashtonby campus as well as in Progress campus, both of them both of them are already closed for September uh, 2020 to end So, if you're interested in one of the programs that is listed here, we highly recommend you to apply as soon as you can, so you can secure your slot. So most of our programs are a mix of online and face-to-face, -face, and as well as a mix of both or hybrid as we call it. Especially for laboratory subjects, you can still experience the hands-on teaching and be more engaged with your program. So these are the requirements for a uh, school application. First is the application form, your high school transcript of records or form 137, your college or university POR, your high school and college diplomas, a copy of your passport, and your English proficiency test. Now for Filipino international students, 
uh, and for students who studied in studied the Philippines as well, uh, we can waive your English proficiency test as long as you can provi provide your letter of English as a medium of instruction from both your high school and college. Now, again, I just want to emphasize that we require both letter of English as a medium of instruction from your high school and college, not just from your college, not just from high school, but from your college and uh, high school. And for students who studied uh, uh, different colleges or universities, for example, you studied a bachelor's degree and you have a master's degree as well, uh, we will still be requiring your high school requirements for you to apply. Now that is for old curriculum. Now for the K to 12 graduates, we, we, may, uh, we may only ask for you to submit your high school, uh, high school documents for, post, for our post-secondary programs. So for example, if you want to apply to one of our post-secondary programs, if you are a K to 12 graduate, uh, you can just search from your high school, uh, your diploma from your high school, a copy of your passport, your English proficiency test, or if you want us to waive your English proficiency test, you can just submit your letter of English as a medium of instruction from your high school as well. So this is just an uh, approximate tuition in Centennial College last fall 2021. Our tuition fee usually ranges between 17,000 Canadian dollars up to 19,000 Canadian dollars for one year or two semesters. Now your initial deposit for receiving your LOA will be deducted to your tuition fee as well. Moving on, here's our scores surveyed by the International Student Barometer. As you can see, all of our scores are above 90% last 2018. Our expert faculty at 91%, campus environment 94%, our graduate school at 96%. And 96% of our students will engage with uh, their studies. And Centennial College is the number one college in Greater Toronto area for students and graduate satisfaction. And employees rate Centennial graduates number one among the Greater Toronto Area Colleges. And Centennial College continue, consistently ranks number one in Toronto for student satisfaction according to key performance indicators. And Centennial College continues to rise as a leader in international education. And for the past six years in a row, from 2013 up to uh, 2019, uh, we have been the number one college choice for international students in Canada. So for six years in a row, we have the most number of international students. And we have been the number one choice for international students studying in Canada since 2013. Um, and we truly provide a lot of services to our international students, especially considering that they're about half of our full-time student population. And last year alone, we, we have a new, uh, we enrolled, at the, uh, I believe over 1,000 Filipino international students. Uh, New international, new Filipino international students. So that is on top of our currently enrolled Filipino international students. And I believe we are the number one uh, choice for the Filipino international students as well. So just for example, here in the Philippines, we have our office in Makati that you can visit if you would like to meet with me or my colleagues. Now for now, uh, the office or personal inquiries like program recommendation, uh, your, your standard frequently asked questions, uh, we can assist you. But for admissions, uh, application, or even your tuition payment, uh, the, our office is still not yet available for those functions. However, uh, I believe we are in the talks of making our own uh, admissions team here in the Philippines so we can cater and process the international Filipino students faster compared to before. And then in Canada, we currently have our registration team as well that can help you with your arrival. Uh, they can provide you with your travel support letter, assist you with your quarantine plan if needed, uh, airport pickup, and everything else about your arrival. And once you are already in college, and we also have our success advisors whom you can consult with for any of your academic concerns, uh, for example, if you're struggling with any of your subjects, uh, we, I would highly encourage you to consult with them and they can connect you with some of our free tutoring. Uh, I believe it's a maximum of one hour per day and a total of four hours for one week. And they can also help you form a study groups. And again, for any academic concerns, uh, they will be your go-to department. And even when it comes to your part-time or full-time work, even if you're still a student or a graduate, 
uh, our employment services can help you get the best chances of getting employed here in Canada. And they can connect you with our industry partners or their leads as well as to which of our partners are hiring. And for visa concerns as well, we have our international advising team with uh, registered Canadian immigration consultants whom you can freely consult with for any visa concern that you may have. Uh, they can help you with your study permit extension, your postgraduate work permit application, and your permanent residency application as well. And these are just some of the end-to-end -end services that the college provides to our international students. Now, the only thing that we do not really help is with the, with the initial study permit application, but that is why we have amazing partners like Canada uh, that can help you with your visa application. And another bonus for our students who will be traveling from the Philippines, for all our 2022 intakes, we have partnered with the Philippine Airlines for your one-way trip to Toronto. Uh, you just need to email your study permit approval and LOA to pr underscore corporate at pal.com.ph and you will be eligible to receive a promo code that you can use for your online booking. And if you are traveling with your spouse or dependents, a maximum of two companions can also be included in a discount fare uh, as long as you submit your proof of relationship with the rest of the requirements. So I believe that is it for my presentation. And I hope to see you in Centennial College. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right. Thank Hello, you. Francis. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Renzo. And I know many of our viewers here in the link and also from YouTube uh, tonight will uh, are interested to study in Toronto. And later, uh, we will have a Q&A uh, together with Renzo, and he will be available to answer all your questions. Okay. So for our second speaker, uh, he is the rec uh, regulated Canadian immigration consultant and the manager of international recruitment and student support for Northwest College. So Northwest College is a, is a school located in the one of the busiest cities in the province of Alberta. So tonight, uh, we will be joined by uh, the representative of Northwest College, which is, who is, uh, uh, who will discuss the requirements, the process of application in Northwest College. So, uh, Sir Surab, good evening. And uh, good, good evening here in the Philippines and good morning there in Edmonton. Yeah, uh, good evening, Francis. Um, let me see if my video is working. Okay, yes, I can see my video is working. Well, hello everybody who has joined this session. Um, and I guess uh, Francis has already introduced me. And my name is Saurabh. I'm the manager for international recruitment and student services here at Northwest College. Um, and we'll discuss about Northwest. So I'll quickly play one video, uh, which will give you a little bit idea about Northwest College, um, about our history, and then I'll get started with the presentation. So just let me uh, share my screen. and we'll quickly watch this video. For over 50 years, Northwest College has transformed lives for the better. Originally known as Alberta Vocational College Edmonton, Northwest opened its doors in 1965 to just 550 learners. As the college grew, Northwest stayed true to its founding identity offering relevant and accessible education that inspires lifelong learning and the achievement of career goals. Through name changes, program expansions, new partnerships, a campus transformation, and tremendous growth in learners and employees, we've stayed true to who we are, a place where we make a real difference to our learners, employees, and the community. It all starts with our learners. They reflect who we are, why we're here, and where we're going. With learners from 114 countries, 75 languages spoken on campus, dedicated supports for people with disabilities, and an Indigenous learning space, our campus is a welcoming place, a place of true belonging. Whether they're new to Canada, completing upgrading, or pursuing post-secondary education, 
Over 21,000 learners attend Norquest to complete or further their studies so they can enter the workforce with the skills to succeed. Our college community reflects our city. We're diverse, we're energetic, and we're full of initiative. Norquest is Edmonton's community college, a place of inclusion and a place of impact. We don't just serve the community, we are the community. No matter where you are, you always have a place at Northwest College. From students to faculty, from staff to supporters, we see you here. Northwest College, see yourself here. Okay. Um, so I hope you like that video. Okay, I'm going to just share my screen and we'll talk a little bit about uh, Norquist College. Um, okay, probably you can see that. Okay, so as you saw in this introduction video that uh, Norquist College is located in the city of Edmonton, uh, which is the capital city of the province of Alberta. Um, and we are going to discuss today about the programs we offer for international students. Um, so, of course, I'm, this is the downtown picture of Edmonton City because our campus is located in the Edmonton uh, downtown. Uh, we do have two campuses, but I'm going to mainly focus on our downtown campus uh, because that's where most of our international students study. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about Edmonton. I'm comparing it with other two major cities here <clears throat> in Canada, excuse me. Um, so uh, Edmonton is a big city. Uh, there are only six big cities in Canada. Uh, which have more than 1 million population, and Edmonton is one of them. Edmonton has roughly 1.5 million population. So from a Canadian standard, it's a, it's a pretty big city. But something that stands out for Edmonton is its cost of living. So the cost of living of Edmonton, um, it's considered one of the most affordable big city in Canada. So a very rough estimate, the cost of living, accommodation, food in Edmonton, is uh, considered 50% less uh, than what you will spend in Toronto and Vancouver. So comparatively, it's a very, very affordable city. So a very fully furnished uh, uh, an apartment in the downtown Edmonton may cost you anywhere from $700 to $800, um, you know, which is very, very affordable if you compare with any other major cities in Canada. So affordability is one, uh, the cost of living. And then on top of that, it has very less taxes, only 5% taxes in Alberta as compared to some of the provinces, as you see here. Um, so Al it makes Alberta one of the most affordable provinces in Canada. So that's one thing that attracts not only international students, but a lot of Canadians also to move to Alberta. Uh, and in this time when you know the economy is a little bit changing, inflation rates are going up in Canada, so people within Canada and also international students are looking for destination, uh, which is very affordable. So on top of the affordability, because uh, Edmonton has less cost of living, low taxes, there are also other, I would say, benefit of studying in Alberta, which is the immigration program. So if you are looking to settle down here after completing your studies, um, in Alberta, we have our own provincial nominee program, which every province in Canada has. So our provincial nominee program is called Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the presentation a little bit. So you get a little bit idea. So again, it's it's considered a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more uh, straightforward and easier as compared to some of the provinces. And also on top of that, employment-wise, Alberta is a very diverse economy. It's the third largest economy in Canada. It has the highest GDP growth rate, which means in simple language, uh, the new job creation is happening in Alberta, um, and there are jobs in very diverse sector. So again, Al Alberta is called an energy province because it produces 90% of Canada's oil, 60% of natural gas. But on top of that, in Alberta, we also have a lot of jobs in healthcare, retail and wholesale trade, educational, social work, agriculture, and also information technology, uh, which is a new field coming up here, and especially in Edmonton, is becoming a home for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, at the bottom, you see here income-wise. So um, in Canada, every province have their own minimum wage. 
And in Alberta, the minimum wage is around $15 an hour, uh, which is the second highest in Canada. And also the income tax brackets here in Alberta is a little bit more relaxed. So the taxes people pay on their income is a little bit less than other provinces. So that also is another benefit that people make more money here in Edmonton as compared to some other provinces. So to summarize this, you know, the benefit of studying in Edmonton is a place where you can earn more money. It's a place where you spend less money. So best of both worlds. Um, also a lot of employment opportunities and immigration pathways uh, to settle down um, if you're looking as that one of the objective to come here. Now, uh, Northwest College, again, you saw that a little bit in the video about a history. Uh, but again, this is a map of Canada, as you can see here. And, you know, Canada is the second largest country in the world. Uh, we are located in the western part of Canada, which is the province of Alberta, you see here. And Edmonton is in the heart of Alberta. Now, Northwest College has a history of around 56 years. Um, and uh, we started our operation in 1965. Uh, we are considered one of the largest publicly funded community college in Alberta. Uh, we have around 21,000 learners who study with us. We have roughly 2,000 international students who are studying uh, with us currently. Um, something unique about Northwest College is that we are very diverse. So you can see here 57% of our student body are people who are born outside of Canada. So these are not international students. These are domestic students because Edmonton, like any other major city in Canada, is very multicultural. So majority of our students who are studying uh, with us, they are permanent resident or new Canadians. Uh, so they make majority of our student population. So they bring a lot of diversity, as you can see here. We have students from more than 100 countries, so many languages spoken on campus. And also within Edmonton, also 35% population of Edmonton is immigrant. Uh, people who were not born in Canada but came in Edmonton made that home. And within our immigrant population, uh, Filipinos are the largest immigrant group. So it's a huge population. Uh, we even have a Jollibee here in Edmonton. Um, so that's kind of a testimony that, yeah, there's a lot of Filipinos uh, within the Edmonton city. Now, what is unique about Northwest? So uh, again, in Canada, every province have their own education system. So you heard from a, a school in Ontario. Um, so we are in Alberta. So education system in Alberta is a little bit different than what is in Ontario. So in, in colleges here in Alberta, we mostly offer short-term programs only. We do not offer bachelor degrees. We offer one-year certificate, two-year diploma. But here in Alberta, the huge focus of colleges and our government is that we match our program with our local economy. So you'll see in a lot of colleges in Alberta, including us, we do not have hundreds of programs. We have roughly around 26 programs, but whatever programs we have, they are in-demand program. And those programs have a very high employment rate. And we are mapping our program based on the local economy. We also sometimes discontinue program if we don't see the students who are graduating and not able to find job. So we're very conscious uh, and intentional about what programs we are offering. So that's the first bullet point you see here is the relevant skill. So we offer only those programs where you can find jobs in the local economy of greater Edmonton area. So that's one good thing that you don't have to worry about whether my program is in demand. No, it is, the, it, it is in demand. That's the reason we are offering it. Also, all our programs have work integrated learning, uh, which again in simple language means co-op practicum internship. So we have a dedicated team who will help. We have some programs which have mandatory practicums. Um, and we have clinical placement team. We have um, the work integrated learning placement team who will find those practicum for students. And some program have optional practicum. And I'll talk about that in detail in the next slide, what are different kinds of placements we have depending on what program you're doing. And this is very important. So applied learning is a key part of the college education, which makes it a little bit different than university education. So we highly emphasize on the applied learning. Um, and this is, and we also have, you know, our partners, which we call PAC, which is a program advisory committee. So again, there are big, big organizations within the Edmonton area where we connect with uh, for students to find those placements. Also, we have a heavy focus on career readiness. Um, so we have one-on-one -on -one career coaches who can support you in that. Um, and we also do career fairs. We do mapping with the employers. So there's a lot of services offered through the Career Education Center. 
and those services are available for students even after they graduate until six months uh, because our employment rate is pretty high and uh, you know we think that after six months you may not need that because uh, the the graduation rate of our student is around 95 percent so 95 percent of the students are able to find job within six months of graduation um, and also we offer all other support services like academic advisor which are student navigator academic coaches to, uh, uh, tutors um, the immigration advising we provide through our office and then career and employment services so those are all different services we offer now in applied learning um, as i mentioned before it's a very key component of the college education so we have different kind of applied learning depending on what program you're picking if you're picking health program we have clinical placement these are usually unpaid uh, but again they are very good quality uh, placements because we are working with one of the premier employers in alberta which is called alberta health services covenant health um, so we have clinical placement with them so you're getting the best quality practicum experience and experience that you can put on your resume when you're looking for work after you graduate and our community study programs we have field placement work placement community service learning as well and then we have co-op so co-op um, are in certain programs, then we have paid co-op. In paid co-ops, those are usually between three to four months, and students can earn salary of between fifteen to eighteen dollars. So roughly, in that three to four months, students can make anywhere from six to eight thousand um, dollars by working in that company and getting paid. So these are all different kind of applied learning, and it varies from program to program. What kind of program um, you know students enroll in. So I'll give you a little glimpse of the programs we offer. Um, so we offer health program, community studies, environmental studies, technology, and business. Um, so again, you'll see the program, as I again mentioned, we don't have hundreds of programs. We have 26 programs, but whatever program we have that reflects the job market, what kind of jobs are available within greater Edmonton area. So that's what um, the reflection is. So here, so we'll start with health program. I'll quickly go through this. So we have, uh, you know, different credentials. Again, as I mentioned, the education system here in Alberta is a little different. So we have two year diploma programs that you see here on the bottom. You have one year certificate, one year post diploma program. And um, also in our case, uh, we also waive IELTS requirement for Filipino applicant who have studied 12 years in Philippines. That could be the new 12 year high school that could be the old 10 year high school plus two year university completion or two year diploma. As long as you have studied 12 years and you have a letter from your college that your medium of instruction is English, yes, IELTS is waived. And we waive it for all program, including nursing, uh, including interdisciplinary therapy, recreation therapy, healthcare aid, healthcare leadership. The only, there is only one program in which we need IELTS, that's pharmacy technician. Uh, other than that, any program a Filipino student apply, if they've said 12 years, they have a letter that the medium of instruction is English, yeah, they can get an IELTS waiver. So here I'll mention a few programs. Um, so practical nursing is one of the program. Uh, Norcos College has the largest practical nursing program in the whole of Canada. It's a very big program, and we have a lot of seats also for international students. So students can apply for that program. We also have a very big healthcare aid program. Uh, we also have a very big pharmacy technician, interdisciplinary therapy, and then recreation therapy. And we have a new program here, healthcare leadership. It's a post-diploma. So post-diploma means only students with diploma and degree can apply. And this program is mainly for those students because our post-diploma program are occupational specific, uh, which means students with only degree and diploma in health can apply for this program. And then we have a new program coming up. We are going to most likely open that in June. This is going to be called Practical Nursing for Internationally Educated Nurses. So anyone who has done a Bachelor of Nursing in Philippines and they want to work as a licensed practical nurse here in Alberta, they can opt for this program. And again, this program will also be, uh, there will be no IELTS requirement, IELTS will be waived. And this program is going to open up most likely in June. Again, that's why you don't see any intake highlighted in front of that. So this program is still under review and it's going to up, uh, come soon. So now in terms of program availability, you know, we don't have many programs available in fall. So the, the next available intake is winter 2023. So you can see here a few programs which are open 
And the tuition fee that you're seeing here is all inclusive price. And that includes health insurance, dental insurance, bus pass, all those kind of things. Um, then we also have here community study programs, a lot of popular programs here. Uh, early learning and child care is very popular. Uh, child and youth care diploma is very popular. And then we have mental health addiction recovery. Um, this is again a post diploma mainly for students who have background in health science, psychology, sociology, so they can apply. Then we have certificates on the top, early learning and child care and community support worker. Some of these are laddering program, which means like you do one year early learning, you go directly to the second year diploma. You do community support worker, you go directly into the second year of the settlement studies. So again, these are uh, the programs here. You can see again, availability wise, you can see here also, we have only availability in winter 2023 and fall is completely full or waitlisted. And all the programs here also have applied learning, same as we have in health. And also all these programs, students can get admission without an IELTS. Um, same here, we have programs continuing disability studies, social work, justice, settlement studies. Um, again, all these programs are again waitlisted, but we still have uh, seats open for winter for settlement studies. So this is mainly for those students' settlement studies who want to work in social science and uh, want to work with newcomers. Um, then we have programs in business, accounting, administrative professionals. Some of these programs have a paid internship. So in business program, we do have a four months paid internship after first year and second year. But again, it's not guaranteed students have to compete and they can get four months paid internship. We even have um, the accounting technician, administrative professional. These are one year certificate. These program also have one month of practicum. And then at the bottom, you see uh, the technology program, environmental protection, energy management. So as I mentioned before, we, uh, you know, we are called energy province. We are the province of oil and gas. Um, so we have a program aligned to that energy management. So anyone who wants to work as an energy manager, energy consultant, energy auditor in oil and gas industry or uh, electrical utility companies, so they can apply. And from Philippines, what I've seen, uh, pretty much 90% of the students applying for energy management are students who have uh, a degree in mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, so they are applying. And same thing in environmental protection, a lot of students applying for Philippines are students who have done a degree in science or civil engineering, they are applying as well. Now, in terms of availability, we have only seats in energy for September, but rest all programs here and then accounting technician has availability but we have availability in winter. For business program, we do not offer these technology programs in winter right now. And then we have machine learning. Uh, I mentioned, I think in the starting that Alberta is becoming, and Edmonton is becoming the home to artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science industry. So we have this program aligned with that. And this program we have built in consultation with Alberta Institute of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. So if you are interested in computer science, more focused on artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, uh, computer programming, then this is a great program. But right now this is waitlisted as well. And this program, uh, these two program, environmental and energy management have four months paid internships and the machine learning has projects. So the students are doing that. Um, and then we have these professional certificate. These are mainly for those students who have done a degree or diploma. And these three programs, the good thing about these programs is it leads to designation. You do business analysis program. You can write an exam, become a business analyst, supply chain management. You write an exam afterwards, and then you become supply chain management professional. And all these three programs have guaranteed paid internship. So if you do this program, not only you'll get education, we will guarantee you, you'll get three to four months of paid internship, and you'll earn six to $7,000 while in the program. So that's great because students are looking for that internship options. And then we have food and beverage, which is more focused on hospitality. And this program also has three to four months a guaranteed paid internship as well in this program. So right now we have seats available in food and beverage, uh, but the other two programs are already waitlisted for September intake. And then we have teaching English. This is another program mainly for teachers. If anyone wants to become an ESL instructor here, in Alberta, and then we have bridging program. So I'll, I'll quickly go through a few other things um, and then we'll close up in five minutes. 
So we have a bridging program here in case a student is not able to meet our admission requirement. So, uh, so Northwest College is a very accessible college, and this comes into place sometimes for Filipino students. So, for example, we have a student who say, I want to apply for nursing, but I didn't study uh, biology. So in that case, students either have to write an online biology exam for free to get into the program. If they don't pass that exam, then they can do that biology course in the bridging portion before they enter the nursing program or any other program, just taking nursing and as an example. And they get a combined offer letter here um, you know, for both the bridging portion and the nursing program, and they can enter into the program through that. So this is to make the admission and the that accessible. I'm going to skip this slide because again, the IELTS requirement is not a requirement for Filipino student, except pharmacy technician, where we do need IELTS 6.5 uh, with no band less than six, uh, but all other programs you don't. Again, our admission is non-competitive. It's first come first pay. So we don't prioritize application based on nationality, which nationality you're applying. We don't prioritize based on your marks. Whoever applies first, gets the offer letter first. So it's a very fair um, and first come first of basis kind of an admission process. And we do give conditional admission offer letters. If you're in your grade 12, you're going to graduate scene and you want to save a seat, yes, you can apply. Um, and here, as I mentioned before, we again, our admission is very accessible. So for some reason, you don't need the admission requirement. You can write two exams for free online. Like for example, I took an example of nursing. You don't have biology. You can take biology exam online from Philippines. You can write twice. That's a free exam. If you pass in that, yeah, you go directly into the program. You don't pass, then you can do that biology course online sitting in Philippines, or you can come to Canada and do a bridging program, but you have to do that missing piece biology, whatever course you need, and then you enter into the program. So again, the admission and the program accessibility is is good so we are we are mindful of that that students sometimes don't meet admission so we're giving them the maximum opportunity to get into the program um i'm going to skip all these slides uh, because again i mentioned before that philippines is one of the country which is elp exempt so that is mentioned here again i'm going to skip application guidelines the only thing i'll mention here is that our application is submitted through apply alberta uh, our application fee is 155 dollars and usually when you submit an application to our host here, Canada Education, it will take three to four weeks to get an offer letter. Um, and again, our in our case, the tuition deposit you have to pay to confirm seat is only $1,000. We are not asking any more than 1,000, but it's up to you whether you wanna pay one year fee, sometimes student pay. But if you want, you can just pay $1,000 and confirm your seat and the rest of the money you pay when you land in Canada. Um, and then again, the, our host here, Canada Education, can definitely guide you about the application process. These are our application deadlines. Again, in right now, because of the visa processing times, we are recommending students to apply in advance. Uh, so for this September intake, uh, we are uh, asking students not to apply after 15th of May, because then it's really hard for them to get visa in time, because it is taking currently 12 weeks, um, you know, on an average to get a study visa, which is roughly three months. Uh, we do have scholarships. I'll not go again into too much detail, uh, but we have entrance scholarship. This is based on percentage and your personalized letters and all that. But again, it's not guaranteed you'll get it. It's a competitive process. You can get that. We have ongoing scholarships also, uh, especially for international students. And also on top of this, this college-wide scholarship. So if you're a good academically performing student, you can definitely get some scholarship. And then we also do some scholarship to recognize your community work that you're doing within the college, within Edmonton community. So those are the other awards. Uh, immigration travel, again, the only thing I'll mention here, two, three things is, yeah, things are pretty much open in terms of travel. So if you're fully vaccinated, you know, you don't have to do any COVID tests before you get on the plane to Canada. When you arrive, um, there is no mandatory testing requirement, no mandatory quarantine requirements, so things are open. Um, so it's it's not that difficult now to travel and restrictions are really minimum. Uh, also, we are in person right now. So online education has shifted from online to on campus. So students who are in Canada right now are studying on campus. So that's the nature of the program delivery. And last, this is my last slide. So I'll 
discuss a little bit about so immigration because I'm myself a certified immigration consultant, so I can legally talk about it. Um, so in terms of um, the immigration, I think Canada is very attractive because um, it is has a very ambitious plan of immigration. You can see here the three-year projection on the top, like Canada is looking to uh, welcome close to 450,000 um, by 2024. So pretty much more than 1 million um, you know, people uh, as immigrant uh, in the next three years. And in Alberta, as I mentioned, we have our provincial nominee program. Our provincial nominee program is called Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. You can Google it. You'll get more information. But something that is very attractive about Alberta is that if you do a two-year diploma, uh, you do a one-year post-diploma or post-baccalaureate, uh, through Alberta Opportunities Team, if you even have a six-month experience in your field of study, uh, and this is not a point-based immigration system, uh, you have studied in Alberta, you work six months in your field of study, and then you have a job, you have an IELTS score of five band, yeah, you can apply for immigration. So pretty much in two and a half years, you will be ready to apply, or even one and a half year, if you've done a one year post diploma and six months work, you are eligible to apply for permanent residency. So even for diploma students, uh, for post diploma, it, it, there's a pathway. Otherwise, sometimes for diploma students, it becomes difficult to get immigration it takes longer um you know because you have to look for points and also within the express entry which is a point based immigration system here in canada uh, even with the lower points as low as 300 points in alberta you can still have a chance so it's very important for those applicants who are over the age of 30 35 because because of age their points come down so it's very critical that they are the most strategic um, they're choosing the province where it's a little bit easier to get an immigration pathway. And then there are others, I'll not go into detail. And we have a rural renewal stream, which is coming up very soon, in which uh, you know the province is identifying certain cities. If you find a job within that, you have expedited immigration. So there are a lot of options within Alberta because Alberta is positioning itself as a welcoming province, um, you know, which is welcoming and want to retain a lot of international students after they graduate, okay? Okay, so that's pretty much the end of my presentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'll give it back to you, friends. Okay, thank you, sir, and for that very informative presentation. We will be joined by later by Sir Surab for the Q&A. Our final speaker for tonight is one of the education counselors here in Canada. So Ms. Van will discuss the process of visa application, the opportunities, and the assistance of Canada education to the applicants. So Van, you can now start your presentation. Uh, we, can't uh, we can't hear you, Van. I think you're on mute. We can. How about now? Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. so there. Again, I would like to thank. I'd like to thank you, Sir Francis, for introducing for that very kind introduction. I would also like to thank each and every one of you for staying up to this hour. I know you have. Other, other better things to do on a Friday night, <laughs> but you're all safe. So thank you so much. Uh, okay, is it clear? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. So let me share my screen first. Can you all see it? Okay. So before I start, I'd like to encourage each and every one of you to type down your questions if you do have. Okay, so you can type it down while the presentation is ongoing. So there. Um, you can ask questions for us, for Kanata, and then you can ask questions also for our previous for the speakers a while ago, for the school representatives of St. Daniel and of Northwest. Okay, so let me start with my presentation. I'll give you an overview of what we're gonna discuss for tonight. 
So I'll be talking about what we are or who we are as a company. Um, what are the services that we offer? What is in Canada and why is it very attractive right now for a lot of international students? Um, what are the processes involved? Like how do you start with the application for the school application for the visa application? I'm going to discuss that as well. I can give you a glimpse also of what it's like or what, it, what are the opportunities once you are and once you reach Canada and future plans, like what are the possibilities if you get to study in Canada? Okay, so about us, Kanata, probably to some of you, Kanata may sound like a, a Japanese company, but it's actually not. Okay, so Kanata is a, a word, it's a Native American word where Canada, uh, where the name Canada came from. So Kanata means village or coming together or meeting place. So it's not a Japanese word, it is Canadian. It is a Native American word, rather, okay. Um, so we are one of the leading educational agencies in Manila for Canada, solely for Canada. Um, probably a lot of you are wondering whether we do services also for other applications um, in other countries. No, it's just solely for Canada. Uh, and we've been in the industry for over five years. Uh, doing processing and student consultation. And yes, we are directly partnered with a lot of schools in Canada, like Northwest College and Centennial College. Okay, so what are our services? Um, before I discuss the services, let me read out for you our mission and vision. So our mission is to help students to achieve their dream by providing our services at no extra cost. Okay, so when we say about when we talk about no extra cost, it means we're not collecting any processing fees from our student applicant. Okay, vision, the first avenue of students with common goal of pursuing their education abroad or pursuing their education in Canada. Okay, so one of the services that we offer is the assessment. So we provide free consultation and assessment to students prior your application. Um, this is why we, since we started the webinar, we encourage students to book um, a consultation with us so that we can specifically answer the questions that you have in mind. Because later on, uh, we're going to have a question and answer portion, but most of the questions that we're going to choose are Yes, those are handpicked questions because we're trying to answer questions that can be um, beneficial for the majority. So if your questions are very specific, um, I highly advise I highly advise you to book a consultation with us so we can address those kinds of questions. Um, next one, we give a representation also. So we represent you to the school that you choose to apply because you do get benefits from that. Next, the third one is documentation. So we provide comprehensive list of requirements and guidelines. So aside from providing, we also collect it. And at the same time, we lodge it. We do submit the documents for you, for the schools and for the visa application. Next is assistance. So it says here, we assist you throughout your visa process. Not just during your visa process, we assist you throughout um, the application, whether for school or for the visa. Mm -hmm. Next one. So for this part, let me talk about Canada. But this one, I'm gonna, you know, give a very brief um, explanation with this one, since um, Sir Sarab and Rendo already discussed more or less their cities in Canada. So Canada is the second largest country um, and with 10 provinces, three territories, and four regions. You have Western Canada, which is comprised of Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. We have Atlantic Canada, where you can find New Brunswick, Prince Edward, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and Labrador. We have the Northern Canada for Yukon, et cetera. And we have Central Canada, which is Ontario and Quebec, which is in, in Ontario. 
Okay. Next one about Canada. So Canada is um, known to be one of the most educated countries in the world since um, almost half of their population has a tertiary degree or a co from a college or university. So the schools are internationally accredited. Um, they have affordable schools compared to other countries like let's say schools in the United Kingdom or schools in the United States or in Australia. Uh, the tuition fees for Canadian school is generally uh, lower compared to those countries. Next, Canada has a very diverse culture and society. So they have diverse culture. Um, they have a very inclusive community also, um, healthy and safe community. And we have their global language education since the Canada, um, most of the people, well, not really most, but the language that they use is English, which is a global language. So it's English and French. Next, they have exciting campus environment. Um, I highly advise uh, for you to check the websites of the schools. They have very well curated websites. So you can check and you can see like, the pictures, what kind of environment um, are the schools located. Well, how their schools look like, what are the facilities they offer. So they do have that in their website. So you can check those. Um, and then you can check also their world-class innovative education. You can see there are the kind of facilities that they have. Sometimes if you check the website, you can see the professors also um, and pictures of the activities that they offer in the school. Okay, this is, a, I think, if not the most attractive, <laughs> this is one of the most attractive, if not the most, um, it's a possible migration. Okay, so I know a lot of you, if not all of you, um, are here and would like to study in Canada because of this um, possibility, possible migration. And the next one is unlimited opportunities. So unlimited opportunities when it comes to studies, unlimited opportunities when it comes to work and other aspects in life. The next one, benefits of an international student. Okay. What is it about being an international student? Okay. So if you are, an international student in Canada, you should always be enrolled at a GLI. A GLI stands for Designated Learning Institution. Um, as an international student, you should make progress towards completing the program. Okay, so you cannot drop your classes and you can't just fail your classes easily because you have to consider that you do have a study permit and the permit has a limited duration. You can't stay there forever. So you have to finish a program before your study permit expires. Next is you need to respect the conditions of study permit. Um, you should stop studying if you do not meet the requirements and you leave Canada when, you, when your permit expires. Okay. So as an international student, you are allowed to work. So you can study and work. So you can work on campus, you can work off campus, and you have what they call co-op. Okay, so on-campus work doesn't require you to have a work permit. So you can work on campus as long as you are a full student and you have a valid student permit. You can work off campus um, and you don't really need to have a work permit again. Um, as long as you have a study permit, that will be fine. And you should be enrolled in a program and have started studying. Okay, meaning you should have started your classes already um, in the program or in the school you've enrolled in. And some schools, I'm not saying all schools, but majority of schools have what you call co-op. Co-op is, is incorporated with a program. Co-op in the Philippine setting is more or less like an internship internship or um, OJT, that's how we call it. 
right? So co-op is usually paid, uh, but there are some instances that it's not. But most of the time, it is paid. So students are allowed to work for 20 hours. Yeah, so during the school semester, while your classes are ongoing, you are allowed to work for 20 hours. During your break, your term break, your winter break, your spring break or summer break, um, you can work 40 hours or more. Okay, so there's no limit during your break. Stay in Canada after your program, so right after you graduate or after you finish your program, you are eligible for what you call the postgraduate work permit. Okay, so PGWP or postgraduate work permit. I'm pretty sure you've seen that term a lot of times if you've done your research before. So for PGWP, um, if your program is eight months or less than eight months, that is not eligible for a postgraduate work permit. When will you be eligible for PGWP? Um, it's only if your program is for a year. Okay, so if you have one year program, that is eligible for a one year PGWP. If you have two years, if your program is, uh, if your program's duration is for two years, you can have two to three years PGWP. Next one. So this is one of the attractions, I think. Um, that's why a lot of people are encouraged to study in Canada. And that is because you can bring your dependents. Um, but when we say dependents, it's not all the members of the family. Dependents is limited to the spouse, common law partner, and children. Okay? Maybe you're asking, Miss, can I bring my mom or can I bring my dad? No, it's limited for the spouse, common law partner, and children only. Here are the documents that you need to prepare. If in case you know you would like to start your application, these are the common documents asked for student app from student applicants. So you need to have a valid passport. Make sure that your passport is signed. Okay, there are a lot of passports that we receive which are not signed. Please sign your passport. So you need to have your valid passport. You need to have your birth certificate. Um, you need to collect your academic transcripts. Um, that's for high school and college. Okay, for high school, I think, I'm not sure if you still call it Form 137, but yeah, Form 137, high school transcript, college transcript. We need your high school diploma and college diploma. Um, certificate of employment for those who are working already. You need to provide ID. IELTS result. Um, what's good? Uh, what's good for, well, currently what's good to announce is that a lot of schools waive their IELTS. And so uh, a lot of schools now don't really require IELTS anymore. What they ask is for the, what it asks for the student applicants or from the student applicants is the certificate of English as a medium of instruction. Okay, and that can be requested from your school. Thank you. So again, I think, um, well, Norquist and Centennial waive, waive their IELTS for Filipino students. So other schools do that also. I'm not saying all schools, but majority of the schools now waive the IELTS, especially for Filipino students. And the next one is resume. Okay. So the process, okay, this is a brief essay explanation of the actual process. If you want to study in Canada, the first step is to consult with a counselor. Why do you need to consult with a counselor? Because that is the actual moment we're in. Um, we can give you an assessment. We can give you suggestions and proper recommendations like which school should you take, which program would be appropriate for you. And during that time, we can give you an overview also. What are the documents that you need to um, present for this particular school, et cetera. Okay. Next one is, so after your consultation and after the assessment with a counselor, 
um, you need to gather and submit the required documents after you get to choose the school that you'd want. The third one is to apply to that school, but the, you have to make sure that the school is a designated, again, is a designated learning institution. After you've lodged your application for the school, um, we wait for the letter of acceptance. Later on, you can ask uh, the school representatives about the duration, like how long are you supposed to wait for the letter of acceptance? Because some schools, they do give LOA quite fast. For some schools, you do need to wait, like for weeks, for four to six weeks. Next, so after you get your letter of acceptance or your LOA, you need to confirm and pay for your tuition fee. Um, you can pay for a semester, you can pay for a year. Okay. Next, number six, you need to get a medical test. We call that the upfront medicals. Especially now, it is very advisable that you get to schedule a bit earlier because um, the, the clinics now are usually full. Okay, so let's say um, if you get the schedule now for a medical, you'll be most likely the available date will be next month or next next month. So it's, it's um, highly advisable that you get the schedule a bit earlier. Next, number seven is to complete all of these requirements. Um, in Kanata, we do help you with a collection, meaning you, you will gather it, but we'll help you in collating it because we'll be the one who will be the one to lodge it for you. Um, we will give you a checklist for this one and we will help you in checking also. Okay, if you've scanned it properly, if the documents are complete, we'll help you with that. So after checking everything, checking and double checking everything, okay, once you've completed it, including your statement of purpose, um, we will submit your visa application for you. After submitting the visa application, we will send you the GCT so that you can check it also. And what we do after that is just to wait and pray <laughs> for you to pass for you to get your visa. Okay. So there are two ways in applying for visa. We have the regular stream, which is the most preferred option for visa application of students, mainly because regular stream is where you can get sponsors. Yeah. SDS is a study direct stream, meaning it's a straightforward, hassle-free type of application. It's hassle-free because you need to collect less documents when you're doing study stream, study direct stream rather, rather. Okay, so we put it on the table on the table so that it's easier to compare. For regular stream, you are supposed to pay at least a semester for your tuition fee. Okay, because this is um, a proof of fund that you have enough money to study in Canada. However, if you're doing the study direct stream, you are required to pay one year tuition fee. Um, for proof of financial capacity, for regular stream, it's um, one year tuition fee. So the amount that you need to show financial capacity for regular stream is more popularly known as a show money. So show money, you just need to give or present a bank statement. So the bank statement should amount to one year tuition fee and one year living cost of 10,000 Canadian dollars. However, in study direct stream, you don't necessarily have to, uh, or you don't necessarily have to present your bank statement, what you need to do is to purchase a guaranteed investment certificate, which you can avail from Canadian banks, and it should be worth at least 10,000 Canadian dollars. For regular stream, you don't need to have your IELTS, but for study direct stream, you are required to submit your IELTS 
results, it's either general or academic, but the score should be not lower than six. And all your band scores shouldn't be lower than six also. Next, um, both application requires letter of acceptance from school. So you can't start your visa application if you don't have your LOA yet. Both stream or both, yeah, both stream, both application would require study plan also. Study plan is also known as a statement of purpose. So SOP and study plan, that's the thing. So if you're, whether you're doing regular stream or study direct stream, you are required to submit a statement of purpose. And of course, your ID, proof of identity, client information. Okay, that's basically, I think this is the last slide. So again, if you would like to start the application, you need to have an updated passport. Uh, book a consultation with us. It is free. The assessment is free. Um, prepare your resume. So you can submit your resume to us right after the assessment so that we can give you recommendations for programs and for your school properly. Unlimited consultation, basically because you can contact us anytime. They can reply through email. You can contact us through WhatsApp. Um, prepare your academic transcripts because you're going to need that for your school application. Uh, free assistance, again, if you have questions, you just need to message us on Facebook or in other um, social media platforms. And then security deposit. Okay, what is a security deposit? Security deposit. Um, I think I mentioned a while ago that we do not collect processing fees, but we do get security deposit once you start or at the beginning of the, the, the process itself. So we, before you get to apply for a school in Kanata, we, we ask for a security deposit first. Security deposit is 10,500 pesos. But your 10,500 pesos or your security deposit is consumable. So when we say it, consumable, it means eventually once you get to the part where you need to submit um, or when you need to apply for visa, you will get your visa application fee and biometrics fees from the 10,500. So technically, there's no um, processing fee or other hidden fees that we're going to get from you. Okay, so if you want to have a um, face-to-face consultation, you can visit us in our office. We are open Mondays to Fridays. Um, our office is in the Enterprise Tower in Ayala Avenue, corner Paseo de Rojas, and that is in Makati. Here, you can also follow us on other social media platforms. So we have a Facebook account. We have an Instagram account. We don't have a TikTok account yet. But that's it. So you can call us as well, and then you can email here okay? inquiries at Canada Education. Canada Edu.com. Sorry. So you can book your consultation there um, or through Facebook Messenger. Next slide. Oh, there. Oh, so you can also follow Miss Kath. So Catherine is one of the education counselors here at Canada. Um, so she uploaded. YouTube videos uh, that can help you uh, and that can answer the, your question. So she also has an Instagram account. So it's Miss Catherine Moon. And okay. And you can watch her videos on YouTube. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, we're not going to have any breaks anymore. We can proceed now to the question and answer or the open forum. Thank you. All right, thank you, Van. Uh, and she's right, uh, we can now proceed with the Q&A. So I have your question. Uh, does the college uh, offer scholarship to international students? And what are the requirements to, to receive these scholarships? Uh, Renzo from Centennial College, can, can you answer this question about scholarships? Uh, yes, hello, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. everyone here. Okay. Now, for scholarships, we do offer it to our international students. 
However, uh, it is required for you to study at least one year uh, at Centennial College to be eligible for uh, one of our scholarship programs. Now I'll be sending the link for uh, the scholarships and the bursaries that we offer since we do offer a lot. So, puro ba Filipino dito? Kasi para ma-explain ko ng Tagalog. So, um, uh, we don't offer one type of scholarship. So, madaming uh, specific scholarships for certain uh, programs, certain colleges, and for uh, certain uh, students. Now, for example, if part ka ng group and then you meet the requirements, you can apply for it. So, uh, hanapin ko muna tas, I will send it. And again, uh, we require at least at least one year of study time at Centennial College bago ka makapag-apply. So we don't offer upfront uh, upfront scholarships. However, if nakapag ka na ng one year, then you may try to browse our website or sa school mismo and look for uh, one that may suit you or eligible ka. Yeah. So, tos to send ko na. So I have sent the link. You can uh, browse through it. Madaming, madaming uh, types of scholarships and bursaries that we offer to our international students. Pero yung uh, all the yung yung requirements na common sa lahat is for you to be at least one year uh, enrolled sa as uh, a Centennial College. Since dun madalas ibig base if qualified or hindi. Okay. Thanks, Renzo. Uh, I believe, sir, sir. Um... Uh, already mentioned about the scholarship, but uh, what about the requirements, sir, to get the scholarships? Sorry, sir. Uh, yeah, so our scholarship, we do have entrance scholarships, so students can apply, um, you know, one month prior to the start of the program. Um, so that program requirement is mostly uh, dependent on students' previous education marks and personalized letter. Um, then we also have ongoing scholarship every intake whether it's a fall or a winter student can apply for scholarship. And we have academic excellence scholarship. We have awards, uh, which we don't look at percentage. We mainly look at your contribution. And then we have um, a college-wide scholarship, which is open for all students. So there are different array of scholarships as well um, that we offer. And again, I'm going to also uh, post the link in the chat. Um, so everyone can take a look about the scholarship information that we have. Okay, yeah, uh, sir, sir, a follow-up question. Usually, how much is the uh, discounts or tuition fee for international students? So again, mainly the discount is through scholarship. So any student who is looking, um, you know, for any discount, the only way and the form is scholarship. So we highly recommend students to apply. And there is a separate application. So it does not mean you submit an application you will be picked for scholarship. Students have to submit a separate application and then they will, and again, we do not apply discount to the tuition fee. We send the scholarship in the form of check. So they get that $1,000, $2,000, whatever they're getting in the form of check. So it's up to the students how they want to use that scholarship amount. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Uh, Van? Yeah, I have one question here. Um, it's about co-op. So I guess our school representatives can answer this one also. They're asking if co-ops are usually are, are guaranteed paid. So they're asking also what is the difference between a co-op and the work placement? Okay, I'll go first. Now, mm -hmm. uh, we have programs. Uh, if you try to browse through our website to look for, uh, for full-time programs, you may you may notice that some of our programs have uh, optional co-op indicated on their name, in their name, uh, in program title or program name. Uh, those uh, programs have a have an optional co-op. It is paid, and for all of our programs that doesn't have an optional co-op, usually you may it may have a uh, a field placement. Now the difference between an, a co-op and a field placement is just that the co-op is an a paid internships, while the field placement is just like uh, normal inter uh, internships here in the country. If you're an intern, most of the time you don't get paid. You're just there for the experience. Now, for most of our programs, may field placements, uh, ganun din yung mangyayari. Uh, when, pero pag co-op naman, these are uh, 
mostly optional for the students. They usually take, uh, they're usually required to be required to take during your uh, academic breaks. And then it is paid. Again, it is a paid co-op, a paid internship. And also after uh, you may still uh, go proceed to your part, uh, part-time job. So in addition to about 20 hour uh, work per uh, uh, 20 hour limit sa part-time job as a student. So if academic break ka and then you have a paid internship or yung co-op, you take ng co-op, after your co-op sa day na yun, pwede ka pa rin mag-proceed sa uh, part-time, part-time job mo since hindi siya counted sa 20 hours. Okay. How about in Norquist, Sir Sir Rob? Uh, yeah, so I'll categorize the co-op or the I'll categorize it as a bigger umbrella, which is applied learning. So we have three kinds. We have mandatory practicums um, in that students have to do it. Otherwise, they cannot graduate from the program. Mm-hmm. Most of the mandatory practicums are in health, community study programs, and they are unpaid. Uh, but it does not mean if it's unpaid, uh, you know, they're less, you know, they, the quality of practicum is really great. Um, then we have optional practicum. In the optional practicum, um, again, we have two categories. We have competitive co-ops and then we have guaranteed co-ops. So in the, in the uh, competitive co-op, students have to compete with other students, uh, like in a business program, environmental protection. And if they are successful in that, they have to maintain certain GPA. They have to pass all the courses. Then, yes, they could get a paid internship. That's between three to four months. And they get a salary of between $15 to $18. So roughly they can earn six to eight thousand dollars and program which have guaranteed co-op um you know in that yes they they will get a co-op regardless of their marks so that is guaranteed and it's a paid co-op so it varies from program to program okay thank you thank you for that yes okay uh there's a question here uh what if the applicant is already uh, a bachelor, bachelor's degree holder and uh, do they need to uh, provide high school documents for the school application for Centennial College and Northwest? Uh, now for Centennial College, again, just like what I've said earlier in my presentation, uh, for old curriculum, you are still required to uh, submit your high school credentials, your, uh, your high school DOR or Form 137, your high school diploma, as well as your letter of English as a medium of instruction from your high school if you want to waive your uh, IELTS or your language proficiency test. Now for K-12 graduates, uh, we can only, uh, you can you may submit your uh, high, school, uh, high school documents if you're applying for post-graduate, uh, post-secondary programs. Now for our post-graduate programs, we may require your college requirements, as well as a resume that has a minimum of at least two years of relevant work experience for you to be eligible to apply for one. Okay, uh, sorry, Sarab. What yeah, about so for, for, sorry. Yeah, so for us, it, it depends. So we usually recommend students to submit all their educational documents, whether it's a high school or a college. Uh, now, uh, once a, the application is assessed, that after that, the admission office will let students know whether they have to submit an official uh, high school or a college certificate. In terms of medium of instruction, it depends. If a student has studied um, in a university after their high school based on the old high school system, 10 years, then we only need the medium of instruction only from the college, not from the school. But it depends. Again, it depends from student to student. Uh, but again, we recommend a student to submit the full package with all their education, and then we will let them know what additional documents we need. Okay, a follow-up question for uh, for the applicants. Uh, is there a age limit uh, with regards with the application in Canadian schools? I can probably go first this time. So yeah, so in terms of our uh, case, um, no, there is no age limit. There is a minimum age limit. So the minimum age is 18 um, and then there is no maximum. And the reason why we have a minimum age because most of our programs are practicums and a, and a minor cannot go to a practicum site. You have to be an adult. And the age of adult here in Alberta is 18 or above. So that's the reason we have minimum age, but there is no um, 
the higher limit of the age. Thanks, sir. Uh, Renzo, what about uh, Yes, same for Centennial College. We do not look for your age. Uh, we just want to make sure that you are qualified based on your academic background and for your professional background. Now, if you are applying for a program at Centennial College, technically you're eligible to apply for uh, any program as long as uh, you have you're you are qualified to study at uh, you're qualified for a post secondary and above program. However, the reason why we recommend you to have any any relevance to your background is for you to not have any problem once you submit for once you have applied for your study permit since most of the uh, most of the problem with the immigration comes when there's no reason, uh, there's no any connection or relation to your background to the program that you're trying to study. So for your initial study permit, uh, we recommend you to uh, pick a program that is in any way related to you academically, um, academically or professionally. And most of the students just take a one-year program and then once they have finished their program in Canada at Centennial College or any program, I believe any program at Canada, they will then proceed to the program of their choice, the one, the one that they really want to take. However, they uh, they just uh, chose another one since it is not relevant uh, to their backgrounds. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question here and. Uh, how long is the application process for, for, for to get LOA? And when is the start of the application for the January or the winter intake for 2023? Renzo? Okay, so uh, for our application, uh, application time, usually we can process it within uh, three days. Uh, however, since we're receiving high number of emails from both uh, agents and students, uh, the processing time now is at least, I believe, within two weeks, one week to one week, one to two weeks uh, as of now. And then for the opening of an intake, usually uh, six to eight months before the start of an intake, the application opens. Now for January, I believe we have we have been advised that the application for the intake will open around June or July, any of those two. But some programs will open at July, and most of the students are uh, have already completed the requirements, and then and then they're just waiting for the application to open. Uh, you can actually submit your application as soon as now, as long as you have completed your requirements, and then the admissions team will uh, will just process it as long once the application for the intake opens. So you may submit now, and then you will receive your deposit letter probably around June or July. June or July, okay. And how much is the deposit uh, required uh, to secure your slot in Centennial College? Mm -hmm. Now, for the application fee, we do not have any. So you can just submit your require complete requirements uh, through Canada. They will submit it to us. And then uh, after the admissions team have reviewed your application, and if you are qualified, you'll be receiving an email from them, either almost an offer letter or the deposit letter. And... At that letter, it indicates that you will be required to pay a minimum uh, initial deposit of two thousand six hundred fifty Canadian dollars. Again, two thousand six hundred fifty Canadian dollars as a as a down payment. This will, uh, after paying the after paying the initial deposit, you'll be receiving LOA as well as well as securing your uh your slot. Now we get a lot of confusion and misunderstanding from our students that just because they got their deposit letter doesn't mean that you have secured your slot. You will be required to pay for your deposit fee for you to secure your slot. So let's just say you receive a deposit letter now, and then uh, it was still available by the time you received your letter. And then it took a lot of time for you to pay. Tapos nung nagbayad ka na, it was already full. Uh, yun. Yun yung madalas na most of the time, that's the common case that the students uh are facing since they thought that uh, applicate, uh, receiving a de deposit letter is equivalent to securing their slot. Again, you have to uh, make an initial deposit of 2650 Canadian dollars for you to secure your slot as well as uh, receive your LOA. Now, there's no need to worry since this uh, deposit, um, uh, deposit fee will be deducted to your overall tuition for one year. 
So let's just say your tuition for one year is 17,650 Canadian dollars. Now, if you have paid your de uh, initial deposit, uh, and you will be deducting it manually. So uh, the remaining balance for your tuition for one year is going to be 15,000 uh, 15, Canadian dollars for That's one correct. year. Okay, sir, sir. Thanks, uh, Renzo. Sir, sir. Yeah, so for our case, um, our processing time, it takes roughly three weeks, three to four weeks. Um, and again, um, you know, if a student is not getting a reply within that time, then yeah, they can, or in on their behalf, Canada can follow with the admissions office and they let them know if there's any missing document. So roughly three to four weeks in processing. Uh, in terms of our application for winter 2023, we open our application 11 months in advance. So since 1st of February, our applications are already open for winter and even some of our program for winter are already full um, or close to getting filled. So it is this is the time to apply for winter. So you can apply for winter right now um, and you will get again your offer letter in that three to four weeks time. And in our case, our tuition deposit is $1,000 only. And that's again, the advance payment they're doing towards the tuition fee. They pay $1,000 and they can get their seat confirmed. And the remaining fee, you know, whether they want to pay or not, uh, it depends on them. If they want to pay, they can pay up to one year fee, one term fee, depending on the visa screen. If they don't want to pay, then in that case, they pay when they arrive in Canada before the start of their classes and they pay term by term. Thanks, sir. Uh, uh, is the medical insurance uh, included in the tuition fee, uh, sir, sir, for Northwest College? Yeah, so the tuition fee, yes, it includes health and dental insurance. Uh, we also include bus pass in it. So the transportation is also included. Um, there are other fees. Um, and the estimate that you'll see on our website, it's all inclusive price. It includes health insurance, dental insurance, bus pass, student association fee, non-instructional fee. So there's a lot, lot of other fees on top of tuition fee. So we are in, uh, we, in our estimate, we are providing everything in it. Uh, the only thing that will not be included in that estimate is the, um, is the food, um, accommodation, and books. Those are the only three things which are not included in that. But rest, all the estimate and all the fees are in that. Okay, uh, is COVID-related uh, sickness uh, covered by this insurance, sir? Yeah, a lot of providers are covering now because that's become a norm now. Uh, but again, it depends if you're traveling from overseas, like from Philippines to Canada, uh, that in health and dental insurance kicks in on the first day of your class. So you do need to have a travel insurance to cover you before you start class. So for example, you're traveling three weeks before the start of the term and that three weeks initial period before the start of your classes, you need to have a buffer insurance that is covered by travel. But once your class starts, then your insurance kicks in and that provides you coverage for everything now because yeah, COVID is here. So the insurance companies understand that they need to be included in the coverage. Okay, thanks, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Renzo, I'm sorry about it's okay. <laughs> so for uh, the insurance, it is included in your uh, tuition fee. So, insurance uh, But we do have insurance. It is part of your tuition fee. Uh, so, and I believe it is required talaga sa Canada na uh, for you to get an insurance. I believe so. Yun, uh, you just need to pay for your tuition, and uh, you will receive your LOA. Uh, it will be indicated there that your insurance is part of your tuition fee as well. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dan, do you have a question on your end? I think it's better to ask also what are the coverage of their ancillary fees because they need to, the students should pay their tuition fees, although they do have their ancillary fees, right? So what is included in those ancillary fees? Ancillary is like the miscellaneous fees here in the Philippines. So what are included in those? until you receive um, in Centennial College. Uh, Sorenzo? Okay, for the breakdown of our tuition fee, uh, let me just uh, check for the uh, Usually this will be indicated on your LOA or my Centennial account, but for the, some references, uh, 
Now, let me just check. Okay, so here's the link, and then I will share my screen then. Sorry. So as you can see, these are the breakdown of our uh, tuition fees. So this is, uh, this is just an estimate. So each program, medyo magkaiba lang, pero slight lang. So as you can see, uh, we have bursary fees, we have career status programming, and then for insurance, let me just check. And domestic and international students, part-time students are charged uh, mandatory health insurance and incidental fees. So part, part, na lang, uh, part na lang tuition fee, ancillary fees yung uh, uh, insurance. So for more details, uh, I have sent the link sa chat. You may browse uh, na lang. Pero for more specific details, uh, it'll be reflected on your MyCentennial account as well as on your LOE na din. Uh, Van, I think uh, while waiting for Sir Renzo, maybe uh, Sir Surab can discuss the ancillary fees, what is included on the ancillary fees uh, with Northwest College. I'll also just share my screen and I think that will be easier then as well. So I think in terms of our fee, um, this is again, I'll share the link later on. So our tuition fee is based on credit. So it, it varies from program to program, how much fees will be. Uh, but in terms of ancillary fees, if we look at the fees, um, we have here, like for example, for insurance, it's around 386 per year. Uh, then we have a U pass, which is the bus pass, which is $180 per term and legal fees, student association fee, and, and there's a fees here that you can see, registration fees, student technology fees, um, and then there is a late payment fees as well, um, challenge exam fee. So there are a lot of things here that you can see which could be um, the fees, but most of the students, they are paying usually the st student association fee as a part of their estimate. And also they are including, or they are being charged program and course fees. So these are the two categories every student have to pay, whereas other and incidental fees only they have to pay if they're asking for these services um, or they are late in paying the fees. So the students just have to pay attention to student association fee and the program and courses fees. Um, and this, again, the estimate is here, even if they want to know more in detail, they can uh, you know, expand on it and it gives in more detail uh, the eligibility criteria, what kind of services they will get. So I'll again share um, the link in the chat and the students can see, um, you know, the fees and all that and how much is my per credit fee also based on the program they're doing. Thanks, sir. Uh, I have a question here. Uh, does the college accept, accept students who are about to finish their degree or their high school or senior high school here, uh, but they want to they want to start their application already. Uh, can they uh, uh, be accepted conditionally? Uh, now for Centennial College, as long as uh, you can provide your TOR as well as your certificate of completion. For K to twelve graduates, uh, you may start your application if uh, if you're if you don't 
if you can't get any of any of them, uh, we don't actually uh, what do you call this? We don't actually encourage. Uh, we don't actually advocate that we have conditional offers since it depends on the admissions team. Admissions team. It doesn't happen most of the time. Uh, we 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 use it most of the time the students that that receives an offer or conditional offer are students with uh, at least I believe one requirements that they lack. I believe most of the time it's for the uh, IELTS or the language proficiency test. So sometimes if they cannot provide one letter, however their their documents that they submit clearly shows that they're still qualified for it, they may receive a conditional offer letter. Now, again, if you cannot provide a certificate of completion and your TOR, then you cannot actually receive a conditional letter as well as start your application. So they need to have their complete uh, TOR, complete uh, diplomas, both from college and high school to start their application. For K to twelve graduates, uh, as long as you're, as long as they are applying for the post secondary programs, they can submit their uh, high school requirements, which are the uh, high school form one three seven or your high school diploma. And if you are for students who are still studying and about to finish, they can just submit your their updated TOR that their school provides, as well as a certificate of completion, and then a letter of English as a medium, a medium of instruction as well. Okay, uh, Sir Surab, what about in your class? Yeah, so for us, I'll probably share my screen and I think this will become better that way. So yeah, we do have a conditional admission process. Um, so even if a student is waiting for their grade 12, um, you know, results to come, they can apply. Um, all what we need is two things. One is a letter from their school um, stating that if they are, for example, in their grade 12, we need a letter stating that their medium of instruction is English. And the second thing, what we need is a proof that they are enrolled in courses and they are going to graduate before the start of the intake. Um, and they also, I think, have to be mindful that they need to give themselves a time to get a visa as well. So if they are able to graduate four to five months before the start of the intake, then yes, that is a possibility and they can uh, submit those two documents. Um, so these are the two things mainly to request conditional admission is to prove that they're enrolled in courses and they're going to graduate before the intake. And, and then also, um, you know, the proof that the medium of instruction is English. So in our case, yes, a grade 12 student who is not graduated yet can apply for conditional admission and we will hold a seat for them if they get a conditional offer letter but there will be a deadline mentioned on the offer letter by which they have to meet those conditions. If they do not meet conditions by submitting their transcript, then they will lose that seat. All right. Thanks, sir. Uh, Van? Okay, I think uh, there's a, a technical uh, problem with Miss Van. So, we can proceed with other questions here. So uh, does the school has on-campus uh, accommodation for international students, sir, sir Sarab? So in our case, we do not because we have a downtown campus and also Edmonton is a very affordable city, as I mentioned before. Um, and again, even if a student have an apartment uh, just for themselves, like one single bedroom, it will not cost them seven to $800. If they have a shared accommodation, it could be an apartment, I'm talking with independent living, that they could have like three to $400. So it's a very affordable place to live. And, and that's why we, we haven't focused on building residence because the outside rental uh, you know, scenario is very affordable. Um, so we do not have, and but we do provide help. So if a student is at stage, they need help. Uh, yes, they can, yeah, yeah, we will advise them where to go and look for the rental accommodation. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, sir Renzo, what about in Centennial College? Uh, for Centennial College, we do offer accommodations for our international students. Uh, it is called the Centennial Place. I'll be sending you the link 
uh, for one month, I believe it, it costs around $1,000. Now, I, I know it is quite expensive and it, it is a hefty sum for Filipino international students. So we do also offer help for uh, students who want to live outside the campus or for off-campus housing. Uh, I'm resending the link as well. So usually we'll, uh, uh, for the Centennial Place, you can, uh, it is a different link. And then the second link that is for, uh, if you need assistance for your off-campus housing. Now, most of the time you'll, you'll be seeing uh, at least 400 up to 600 Canadian dollars per month. And if you're lucky, uh, you may also get a 350 Canadian dollars per month uh, for a housing. All right. Thank you, Ramos. Uh, and I think that's it uh, for one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, you need to book for an appointment with, with us. So we have a couple of counselors uh, that can help and assist your application to Canada, uh, to, to these schools for, the, for if you want to study in Alberta, uh, we have Northwest College. And if you want to study in Toronto, we have Centennial College. And again, uh, we don't collect processing fees for, for our students. So uh, we will help you on your school application and also for the visa application for free. But before we start the application, you need to settle the 10,500 10, pesos. That's pesos uh, for the security deposit fee that can be used for your visa fee and biometrics later on when we launch your application. So don't worry if you have questions uh, regarding uh, what program you can take, what intake uh, uh, is available for you, uh, we can discuss that on our one-on-one -on -one consultation and assessment. So again, uh, we would like to thank uh, the presence of uh, Sir Surab uh, of Northwest College and Sir Renzo of Centennial College tonight. Uh, and we hope uh, we can process uh, a lot of uh, application in this coming uh, January 2023. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Nice, have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Week. Yes, thank okay. you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a great thank week. You. And I know uh, this is <laughs> a very exciting weekend for us, Filipinos, because... Yes, uh, yes. In the Philippines, yeah, that's true. Yes. <laughs> so, Rob, uh, we will have our election. Uh, on oh, Monday. okay. That's why. Okay, then. Go and vote, then, yeah, and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Everyone, and stay safe and healthy. Sir, Bye. Sir Rob, and Sir Renzo. Thank you, Francis. Thank That's you, right. man. Thank you, Sir Rob. Have a good Thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Can they hear me now? Yes, man. Okay. Oh, um, can we ask? Are they not here? Anymore? Na, na picture na screenshot ka na ah, okay. <laughs> no, wala ka kanina. Kaya nga, uh, not sure why. Kaya, ay, and screen ka na. Okay, guys. Happy weekend. Happy 